Welcome in. It's the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast. It's Mid Penn Conference Preview Week. Dave Heckard's joining me here. I'm Dustin Hawkinsmith. We're moving on to the Mid Penn Keystone Division now. We're stepping up into these AAA divisions here, Dave. And a couple interesting ones, you know, that we've touched on here late in the week the Commonwealth Division, and now looking at the Keystone, where, you know, you have a lot of things that are still very much, I think, up for grabs to start the year. I think you can look at the Keystone for starters with the, with a favorite here. And, um, you know, the coaches, the way that they voted uh, for, for this, Carlisle is a deserving favorite. They were unbeaten in league play last year. Really good team back. They do lose a, a few key pieces. Uh, then you have Northern, um, you know, come in at the second best. Dan Nauman, uh, I, I think, can, can kind of engineer a, a little bit of improvement there for Northern. Redlands in that mix. And then I think you have kind of a pretty clear separation between the top three teams in this league and everybody else who's kind of fighting for that middle tier. But what do you make of the top of this division for starters with those three schools? Oh, the Keystone division. So I, I, I definitely have Carlisle as my favorite, but are they a clear favorite? And, and uh, I, my answer to that would be no. I, I, I think that uh, Carlisle is a little bit of a favorite, but I, man, my, my sleeper team in that division is Northern. And, and I, I think that, you know, they have enough firepower returning. Um, they, they lost a tight one last year to, to, to Carlisle. Um, and I, man, I, I just feel like Dan Nauman put in, you know, those guys put in a lot of work this off season, uh, the preseason. And when you're putting in work like that, you're going to see improvement. Um, now that being said, I know, Joe Wilson too. And I mean, he puts work in the off season too. So their kids are going to get better. Um, I, I think Carlisle has some experience returning and I'm interested to see uh, the, 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 the freshman, the new, the new Adams kid who I, I, you know, had a pretty good uh, youth career for them and will fill in right around 170 pounds where, you know, they did lose some, some pretty tough guys. So uh, that 60, 70 pound weight class where they lost, uh, you know, returning district or district champ, Sean Smith and, and the Zimmerman kids. So um, I, I think they're, they're pretty spread out. They'll fill in pretty well, but don't, don't sleep on Northern. And uh, look, I mean, look, here, here's the deal. You know, a lot of times the, the teams that, that make it to the top at the end of the year, aren't necessarily the best teams at the beginning of the year in that division. They're the teams that can hold it together. You know what I mean? Who can stay healthy? Who, who can stay eligible? Who can, who can stay, you know, you get skin stuff, like things happen throughout a season. And, and sometimes the team that, that wins it all is the team that can just hold it together the most. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see between, in my opinion, Carlisle, Northern and Redland, who can hold it together the most. And in my opinion, that'll be who wins that division. And I do think if you're just looking at overall roster talent, you know, I, I don't know. There's not a great big difference. There's not a huge separation between one and two and two and three in this division. And I think uh, in this day and age, Dave, in, in wrestling, to be able to have numbers that might be in the high 20s or low 30s, what, it, what role does that play, as you said, in keeping things together? Because, you know, you have even some really good teams that don't have a lot of options. A, if somebody gets sick or hurt, and B, if you want to try to match up better with somebody, you don't have the pieces to be able to move around all that much. And I think when you're looking at Northern and Carlisle, you're looking at two teams that as much as anything else, they have some options when things go sideways or when they want to match up with people. Yeah, that depth key, uh, that depth part is is huge, especially in, in team wrestling, you know, as well as I do. You know, you have guys that, you know, get sick. They're not in the lineup. They're in school. They're not in school. They're eligible. They're not, in, you know, and, and you have to have people ready to go. So, you know, depth is, is definitely a, a big part of this. And I, and I feel like, you know, in this division, that's where the Carlisle Northern and, and even, you know, at the end of the day, Redland, uh, you know, have a little bit of an edge is is that that depth. And, um, yeah, and, and even depth as far as like what you're getting in the room. So you're only as good as your workout part, right? And, and, and if you don't have people in the room that can push you, that, that, that can challenge you, well, you're only going to be so good. So, you know, the more bodies in the room uh, for, you know, good, able bodies to, to step in and challenge guys and, you know, maybe not be true starters, but they're guys that you can depend on. 
um, that, that's a big advantage. So looking at uh, Carlisle and I know, you know, you lose Sean Smith who not only, you know, a district champ, but just the, I think the kind of tone setter that I think a lot of programs would like to have just in terms of being smart and disciplined and, and focused uh, and kind of setting that tone. But uh, Colton Zimmerman, who has meant so much to them, was a, a state medalist a couple years ago. But now you look at what's back. And so you have, you know, Jarrett Wilson, who's done a lot of wrestling for Carlisle. You've got um, Anthony D'Angelo, who I, I thought was pretty good as a freshman. You can kind of expect the jump here as a sophomore at 160. You got Marquise Miller, who's a sophomore, ticketed for 189. Malik Miller, who's done some wrestling for them at 215. And Leighton Schmick, who should be on the short list of state medal contenders at 285 pounds. That that run in the upper weights, not only, um, you know, you have a lot of continuity there, but it's at weights where there just aren't a lot of teams who can put a competitive guy in each of those spots. So in terms of car, trying to match up with Carlisle, it is going to prove difficult for teams just because of the experience and the ability that they've got. And I didn't Mitchell Adams who, who expects to, to slot in at 172. So you've got a pretty nice run of good kids there in the middle and upper weights. And I think in the end, that's just going to be difficult for, for a bunch of these teams to try to match up with. And, you know, from before I've talked a lot about like, you know, the good upper weights and how a lot of times you secure bonus points with, with good upper weights. And like you said, Leighton Schmick is, is an outstanding heavyweight. And, uh, you know, he's my pick for wrestler of the year in this division. Um, you know, him and I, I know the uh, Fratelli kid from Northern had a good year last year. And, but I, I just think that Schmick, uh, you know, he's got it. He's got the tools as a heavyweight and uh, was a district runner up last year. Um, you know, lost to Dylan Rodenhaber from Redland in the finals. Um, who, who was a senior. So I, I, I see Schmick, you know, at the top of the podium in the district. Um, but, you know, I like to see this kid take home a state medal. And, uh, in, you know, he's talented enough to do that. Um, I think he just has to turn that corner a little bit and, uh, and, and believe in himself and, and get that done. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just think he's a good looking heavyweight. You know, he's he got a good frame on him. He moves well. He knows how to wrestle. Um, so that'll, that'll, you know, he'll get a lot of bonus points for, for Carlisle, as will Malik Miller at 215. He has a lot of experience. Um, you know, and the, the Angelo kid, as you mentioned. So they do have some good guys up there through those upper weights that, you know, will, will score bonus for them. And like you said, they're going to be tough to match up with. You know, the, the questions I think are maybe down below where you can look at and see that maybe Northern can can try to make a little bit of a run if you're looking at the head-to-head -head with Carlisle. Um, Trent Walker, can, can he take that next step here as a senior and be a, a pretty steady producer of bonus points for the whole year, you know, right. be consistent, a consistent presence there. They're going to be looking for some solutions that uh, in those lower weights where I think Northern with, with Rocker Fratelli, you know, they're in pretty good shape there. I really like um, Cole Bartram learning from that freshman experience. He came in with a lot of uh, accolades and he was, you know, high, high praise coming into his freshman year. Not that he didn't back that up because he looked really good doing it, but I think he just learned some freshman lessons last year that you can kind of hope carry over into sophomore year and help him build the same thing I would say about Leighton Schmick, you know, to be able to wrestle into that super regional round and be able to get the feel what a state medal um, winner feels like at heavyweight that experience can benefit him a lot as a junior and give him a lot of confidence. I think the same thing is going to happen here uh, with Cole Bartram. I, I would expect a pretty good step forward for him. Yeah. I, you know, that, that jump from your, he, he, he wrestled varsity as a freshman. So now you're a year older. And, and, and in my opinion, in high school, the biggest jump in maturity a lot of times is that freshman to sophomore year. Right. Or, or that sophomore to junior. And and you're going to see that in Bartram. I, I, I think, uh, you know, he had a nice little football season this year. I got a chance to watch him a little bit on film. And, uh, you know, he ran to the ball well on defense. He's a tough kid. And that's going to translate over into wrestling. And, and you know, I, I see him taking a big jump. And uh, I think he's a kid that, you know, can qualify for the state tournament. Now he is at 52 and that's going to be a bear of a weight in district three. So, you know, um, you know, is he going to drop? Is he going to stay there? I, I don't know. Um, but I, I think he's a, he's a darn good kid and, uh, but he is at a tough weight. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, he, uh, he steps up to the plate there and, and answers that call and, you know, in that weight class. 
Uh, one thing I would say, you mentioned the tight, tight matchup between Northern and Carlisle. And I think, you know, Northern with Dan Nauman there, uh, has has a way of wrestling up you know they, they wrestle tough in duels and sometimes you can't really quantify or put your finger on why certain teams are able to do that they just they, there's a tone set that you're going to go out there and scrap and all these guys do um 36 29 was the score of that matchup and uh carlisle had three guys who who scored pins in that match who aren't back this year so they're going to be looking for those bonus points out, out of somebody and northern's going to try to look to close the gap i think you got a tight duel in your hands where, there when there's the when they square off um redland i think um you know brian baglio has done a great job there too i think you know they're probably without looking at roster numbers a hair below both northern and carlisle in terms of overall numbers uh, they bring some guys back and he, you know, he mentioned a, a few guys as ones to watch Marcus Bleaver at 152 and 160, probably see him at 152 in the postseason is one guy that he said is, looks a lot better. Josh Patrick is a sophomore right around that same weight range. Also mentioned him as an improved guy. And, uh, Bryce Phillips, um, sophomore this year wrestled at 215, pretty light. And he's grown into that, that frame. So you have a little bit of intrigue with these guys and Redland, you can see some, some strength developing right there in the middle and upper parts of their lineup. Yeah. I, I really like Brian Baglio. Um, you know, he was a tough wrestler, uh, you know, um, for, for Redland high school state champ himself. Um, and, and I, I tell you what, the, the, the kid that I am interested to see here is the Bryce Phillips kid as a sophomore here at 215. I, I think he's going to be pretty tough this year. Um, the the uh, Palala kid at right around 32, you know, he has some experience. Uh, he, I think, was a districts last year coming back for them. Um, so, but I, I do agree with you. I, I think they're headed in the right direction. I like Brian. I like what he does. Um, but I just don't think they're going to have enough for Northern and Carlisle in that division. And, um, you know, and, and you know, I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe, you know, by the end of the year, things can happen. But um, just looking at what they have returning and, and, and what these other teams have, I just think Redland um, is going to be just a hair below those two teams, but well, well above the rest in that division. So looking on down the line a little bit here there, you know, I think the difference between four and eight in this division is not going to be all that great. And you can kind of, it's reflected in how the coaches voted uh, looking at the predicted order of finish in this division. You can, you can put any of these teams in any of these positions and I wouldn't argue with it much. Uh, CD East and lower dolphin came in tied for fourth, you know, CD East um, three and 12 last season, but they've got a couple interesting pieces there with the, with the big kid, Travis Armstrong, who I thought looked pretty tough. Marcel McDaniels has done a fair amount of wrestling. Thaddeus Cribs is a younger brother of Levi Cribs, uh, Krebs who, um, uh, graduated last year. You know, these are, are pretty solid guys that you can sort of build around. Now, you know, what, what else do, is Bill Prince and that team? What, are the, what else are they bringing to the table? We'll kind of be able to answer that question. Are they the fourth best team? Or are they going to slip a little bit further down the line there? But I wouldn't ignore them outright. I think they, they've got a few solid pieces. It'll just be interesting to see how it comes together for them. Yeah, those teams, you have East, Lower Dolphin, Palmyra, Hershey, and Mechanicsburg. And he, here's the key, the, the culture, right? Like you got to build that culture. And, and I think that's what you're going to see out of these teams this year. Uh, you know, Coach Prince back again at, at CB East here. And then, you know, Lower Dolphin, uh, new coach, uh, you know, Woosner, who was an assistant there for a while. Um, you know, they're going to be looking to, to build that culture and to build their program. I know, uh, you know, East has some guys returning, the Armstrong kid up top, you know, did all right for them last year. Um, I, I think Lower Dolphin was pretty young last year, so I expect to see some improvement, you know, in, in, in with them as well. I, I, you know, that you're going, you're moving up, you're going, you're going, you're heading the right direction there, you know, as far as uh, Lower Dolphin's concerned. Um, you know, Palmyra, Hershey, you got, um, you know, Coach Booker, who was an assistant at Central Dolphin, now at Hershey. Um, you know, great, great pickup for them, in my, in my opinion. Um, I know last year I was at a, a Hershey match, and uh, I mean, I, I think I saw seven bouts wrestled. I, I think they had seven guys, seven spots filled. And I know talking to Brandon, he has about 25 kids out right now. Um, and again, you know, you're building, but it starts with numbers. You know, you can't, you can't fill lineups with, with nobody. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, some of these teams are headed in the right direction, but nothing would, like you said, nothing would surprise me between four and eight. And I think, um, 
you know, looking at Lower Dolphin, a, a big group of freshmen who did a lot of wrestling for them last year. Now, how yeah. is that going to pay dividends for them now as, as a sophomore group? Is there synergy, you know, in, in having that group stay together? And they've been together, I think, for, you know, coming up the whole way through guys like Clay Kozer and Joey Swartz and Marshall Stahl. You know, they, these are guys that can maybe if they do take that next step forward, you know, Lower Dolphin has some wild card potential there. Uh, Hershey, as you mentioned with Brandon Booker, you know, I think this is definitely culture building time for, for them. It's building out the basics. And I think the number one thing that they can do right now is just get a lot better at the end of the season versus now and try to, you know, try to roll that momentum and get some of these kids who improved in year one, get them back. And now you've sort of laid that foundation to really try to build out a little bit more. I don't think Brandon Booker is looking at this as, as being a contender or this or that. I really think he's looking at this as, Let's get to the basics. Let's learn the basic moves. Let's get these kids better. Let's get their expectations up. Let's get their work ethic and, and how, how to go about their business in the wrestling room. You know, it's, it's simple stuff that if they can just execute that well, it can be big in year two, but I'm not really expecting a major jump from Hershey in year one. This is an 0-12 team that, you know, lost probably three of their, their better guys from last year into this year. So it really is um, as simple as just working to get better. Yeah. And, and, and you got to have that mindset where, you know, you're, you're, you know, what's coming. And, and I think, uh, you know, I think Brandon has that, out, that, that knowledge, that experience to realize that. And, and then the other two teams I, I want to talk about, you know, Paul Myra and Mechanicsburg uh, also, you know, in that mix and uh, you know, again, that, that culture building and I, in Mechanicsburg actually has some guys back, you know, I, I, you know, a handful of guys that have a lot of experience and, uh, I feel like, you know, they, they got to take that next step though, right? They, they, they got to they gotta keep working hard and, and look to take that next step. But, you know, I think that they do have some returners that, you know, can, can, can win some matches for them. Um, but, you know, the four to, the four to eight uh, is going to be a, you know, you put them in a stirring pot and you stir that pot and, you know, a different team is going to come out, you know, it's going to come out different each time. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that division kind of fares out and uh, ends up, but I definitely see, you know, the, the uh, Carlisle Northern Redland being at the top and then, you know, a battle from four to eight. So. Uh, lastly here. And, and, you know, as we mentioned, you can put these teams in any order, but Mechanicsburg light on numbers here for, for Greg Mud Budman and his group. But what's interesting about them is that, They've been trying to bring this group along. They're juniors now, yes. but they've been wrestling together since their freshman year. And I think it's just all about looking at this team and, and seeing if they can collectively turn a corner. If, if Greg gets uh, Tyler Budman to take, to take a, another big jump up or Jason Boyer or Parker sample, you know, there, there are a few contenders there that if he can get, three or four of those juniors to, to kind of take a leap as he's been hoping and they've been working to do, then who knows what Mechanicsburg is capable of doing. They're just going to have to uh, not give away a lot of points in, in these duels just from forfeits. Yeah, th that's the key to forfeit deal, right? So like you said, uh, Budman's son, Tyler Budman, he's going to return at 113. Uh, you know, Jason Boyer returns at 120 pounds. You know, uh, you, you got the Lita Bomb kid returning. Uh, sample returning kid by the name of Antonio Zeno um, up at 89. Jaden Connors returning at heavyweight as a junior. So you're right. That junior class that they have is, is a nice little group. Uh, you know, hopefully they can just fill off that lineup the rest of the way, you know, to, to, to not give up forfeits and give up that six points. And if they can do that, um, they're going to find themselves in some matches, I think. So it's the mid pen Keystone division. If you check out penlive.com, the high school wrestling section, that full preview will be up by the time you're listening to this. Coaches voted uh, the order of finish and had Carlisle, Northern, Redland at the top there. CD East, Lower Dolphin, Palmyra, Hershey, Mechanicsburg. Got a few different programs here in different stages of building. And you've got a few programs at the top who have been consistently at the top of this mid pen Keystone. So the expectation, you know, I kind of agree with the coaches here. You're going to see Carlisle, Northern, Redland, land duke it out how those teams match up with each other will be interesting i think you have northern maybe a little stronger in the lower weights redland maybe a little stronger in the middle weights and carlisle a little stronger in the upper weights it could be a fun little ride here in the mid pen keystone joe wilson and his group unbeaten last year looks like the team to beat but it will be an interesting year in the mid pen keystone division 
check it out uh, on, on penlive.com, the preview for the Keystone. All the mid pen previews are up now. And you can check us out on the Pen Live Wrestling Podcast. All the division previews are in audio form too. So download that on uh, Spotify, Apple, and iHeartRadio. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the Pen Live Wrestling Podcast, and we will see you next time.